Bold Look Podcast, your number one resource for everything bold freight trucking. Hey guys, welcome to the Bulk Loads Podcast. Allerson here with me. What's going on? Let's do a truck feature. All right, let's go. This uh, week, we're going to do Rick Strait with Flat Top Trucking. They are up out of Michigan. And uh, man, we haven't done a pneumatic before. Yeah, I was looking at their picture. They uh, that picture, that rig is clean. They got they got the pneumatic all uh, shined up and polished, and it looks really good. Yeah, I love that color too. Like I don't know if that's uh, kind of like call your truck. Yeah, like a um, almost like a gunmetal gray yeah, type. Gunmetal yep. gray with that red stripe. Um, but yeah, so man, awesome truck, Rick. And um, yeah, support your or appreciate your membership on Bull Clothes. Been on for now. Uh, yeah, since 2012. Yeah, yeah, yeah been a long 12 time. years. So awesome. Well, today's podcast, I'm going to bring on Andy Richard. He is the CEO of Sap Brothers. Um, we actually have a mutual friend, Andy Holtz, with HD Commodities, and uh, who connected us. And uh, I tell you what, we hit. I mean, we we hit it off from the start. Yeah. So um, I don't want to give too away too much of the podcast. We'll talk about it afterwards. But um, man, this is a faith filled yep. podcast. And um, Andy is the third generation um, at, at Sat Brothers. And um, man, just uh, really enjoyed uh, his heartfelt story about it. We know a lot of our customers shop at Sat Brothers, yep. um, especially kind of where they're located. They have 17 uh, travel centers. And uh, man, just uh, it's a, it's a really cool outfit. And uh, I, I don't want to give it away. I don't want to rehash, but you got like, like what pioneered me to reach out to him was an encounter that I had at yeah. a Sat Brothers one late night, or I should say early, early morning. Yeah. Jared, I'll say I always, uh, I always stopped there at the Harrisonville, Missouri location. Um, I'm originally from Kansas City. So whenever I travel up there to see uh, some family, I always, my wife always makes sure that we stop at that one um, because of their clean bathrooms and such. But we've always had just such positive interactions there. Um, they've just got an amazing business model. Well, we know that majority of our truckers well i mean all of them i mean they have to go to most of them fuel up at fuel yep. stops so i mean there's a huge percentage of their time that are, are, are that are at spin at rest stops and um we think that again sat brothers they are doing it right uh, yep. by welcoming them and um really making it um yeah just making it a welcome feeling i yep. guess i should say so awesome i know i was gonna say this too and i said it in there but like did you know that was a coffee can I had no, I didn't put two and two together until I actually like their, visited their, their sign yeah. at the top. I, I guess for the longest time. I was kind of going your route with the oil. The yeah. Oil can yeah. Thing. I was kind of going your so route. Coffee. Yeah. So I thought, anyways, I thought, I was like, man, how did I not know that? But I'm glad I'm not the only yeah. one. So cool. Well, with that said, here is my conversation with Andy Richard of Set Brothers. Andy, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Really yeah. Appreciate well, we. We have uh, some mutual friends, Andy Holtz with HD Commodities, who uh, I met a couple of years ago, um, but uh, a dear friend of yours. Yes. Yes. Very dear friend of mine. Awesome. Yeah. Well, he's the one that got us in, in uh, connected together. Uh, you are the current CEO of Sat Brothers. And man, we are, or I should say, I am a huge fan of Sat Brothers. I've told you the story, but I'm going to, I'm going to say it again just to kind of set the stage but it was over a year ago we were on a ski trip my family we left at eight o'clock at night i'll never do this again um like from here on out i'm driving during the day uh, but we left from here springfield missouri out towards colorado and i remember it was like 1 a.m in the morning i'm trying to do everything i can to stay awake we needed fuel but we pulled into the sat brothers Right there is it at Junction City, I believe, right? Yep, Junction City, Kansas. Yep, yep. Junction City, Kansas, past Fort Riley, and yep. we pull in there, and <laughs> I'm I'm half asleep. I go back to you know use the restroom. I'm sitting there, and I look up, and you know there's you know using the restroom. There's the advertisements, and you know, I'm always looking to see kind of what you know what are they selling, CV products or lubricants or whatever, and I notice scripture written on there and i wish i would have taken a picture i don't i can't remember what scripture yeah. was but i was like oh that's really cool that they got you know scripture on there 
Yeah. Anyways, I go, I get back out. I, I grab some sunflower seeds. I grab a monster energy drink. I think a pack of gum and actually I put it all on the counter and there's actually some five hour energies. <laughs> I grab one of those. Cause I'm like, whatever, I'm not going to, you know, I got precious cargo <laughs> that I'm yeah. all across Kansas. Yeah. And I, I put it on the counter and yeah, the gentleman was just so, uh, he was so polite, but he was like, man, it looks like you got a long haul ahead of you. And I was yeah. like, yeah, I do. He's like, well, where are you going? But yeah, struck up a good conversation, but it, it stood out to me that, man, these people, number one, I, you know, the scripture, but just even the conversation with the attendant that, man, these people actually care for their customers, which, sure. man, in today's society, and you and I both know, you don't see that everywhere you go. And sometimes it's a little bit of a, um, maybe kind of a lost trade or loss, you know, a lot of businesses kind of lost that touch. We have bulk loads try to do everything we can to give that sense, um, that customer service and empathy and servanthood towards our clients. But I just, I want to first off, yeah, thank you for, man, the seeds that were planted, you know, years ago um, for the service that you guys do today. Sure. Yeah. That I, yeah, I'm imagining what you read is we have a quarterly kind of uh, uh, publication that we post. It's called the Coffee Break Reader. And most of it's ads. I mean, it's our vendors displaying, hey, this is our two for one, or this is what we're, this is our special but I always get to put a message on the front of that. And then usually in front of the urinals, they'll have kind of the cover and they cut every sheet and they show in front of each thing. And, yep. and I try to uh, take a little extra time and, and write those. And I usually do add scripture, but I don't, um, a lot of times what I'll do is I won't even overtly put the, the actual scripture itself in there. I'll talk about a message about, we, 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 typically blessing and serving and the, and the fact that our customers are a blessing to us and thank you and, and a positive message like, Hey, what, what would it look like if this, this month or this season, you kind of thought about the world like this. And then a lot of times I'll sign my name and just put a kind of a corresponding piece of scripture there. Yep. And, and my hope and prayer is that, is that those folks will, will actually like, think, Oh, what is Ephesians, you know, two versus, you know, whatever the, whatever the scripture may be. And they go look at it and then like, Wow, that's that's kind of rich. Or I'll let me let me read the rest of that chapter. Um, so that's typically what we do. There's there's sometimes where we'll actually throw the scripture on there too. But a lot of times what I'll do is it, it'll be very related to what whatever the message that the coffee brew reader has. But uh, again, I think you you hit the point is that you know I was blessed to come into an organization. It was it was started by my grandfather and his three older brothers. Uh, my grandfather's name was Bill. He was the youngest of the four Sap brothers. But, but they always, they always thought about business as as a way to bless and serve others, and and they thought of it as a way because they they believe they believed, and I, what I believe is that this is what God asked us to do with our time, talents, and resources, and businesses, and all of those things. Uh, you, that sounds very pie in the sky. No, uh, not at all. And probably be a little bit hallmarky, but the reality of it is, you know, you, you have to make money in a business. You have to treat. You have to, you know, you have to do a lot of different things to stay afloat. But, I, but, but I think you can do all of that in the context of saying, why do we exist? What's our ethos? And and with your employees, the way you treat them, you can bless and serve your employees if you do employment the right way. You can bless and serve your customers if you're excellent at what you do. If you provide great customer service. And you can you can bless and serve the communities you're in via helping support them philanthropically. Also, just also just being an awesome employer and an awesome place to stop, and a positive place to stop. So, we really start there. We say, why do we exist? We exist to bless and serve. And then, and it would take too long to kind of. But then we try to get more granular for our folks. And, and another thing too, just to point out, is that even if you're a customer of Sap Brothers or employee of Sap Brothers, and you don't believe in God, which is okay. We, we really feel confident that you could still get behind the message of blessing and serving your fellow human being. So your ethos doesn't have to be that, that it starts with God. Ours is, ours happens to be that it is, but, but we want everyone, I guess, to get on the bandwagon of blessing and serving other people through, through the conduit of Sap Brothers. Uh, yeah. and, and, and again, you do not have to believe at the start of what we believe. We just want you to, if you're a teammate at Sap Brothers, you at least got to be on the mission of blessing and serving other people. Yeah, I love that. 
you start talking about your grandfather being one of the three brothers that started it. Um, can you kind of expand on that? Just the the history of Sat Brothers, kind of how they started, and maybe in how you all have morphed to the organization you are today, more than just a fuel stop. Sure, sure. Uh, they're, they're, so there actually there's four brothers. They're right in a row, Bing, Bing, Bing. But they were the four youngest siblings. They actually had three older sisters. Uh, depression babies. I believe my grandfather was born in 1932. Um, and so all of these brothers, they grew up, their dad was a sharecropper. Their dad and mom really struggled, I don't think. It's one of the stories that my grandpa always talks about. And actually, one, my grandpa and one of his brothers wrote a book. And it's interesting, just kind of their disagreements they had with their dad, the way their dad farmed versus what the kind of the modern farm that they thought things looked at. But either way, when they were children, they really struggled. They kind of went from farm to farm uh, and, and, and had pretty pretty humble beginnings. All of them joined a different branch of the military, starting with the oldest, which his name was Ray. I think Ray may have been in the Army, and one of them was in the Marines and, and Air Force, and then my, my grandfather. My grandfather was in the Army. So they all were in different branches, which is kind of neat. Four brothers, four branches. They all were in a different branch. Uh, got done with that. And my grandfather wanted to be a school teacher. So through the GI Bill, started to get his education. Um, and so he he that's where he met my grandmother, was a, was in small town Nebraska as a school teacher. And he, one of the brothers said, Hey, we should we should get into business with each other. This is after they've all you know started adulthood and started yep, their started career. their country. Yep. And so he said, Hey, I think there's this um there's this car dealership, there's this Ford dealership in Ashland, Nebraska, that's for sale. If we can each come up with $10,000, I think we could buy it. And so they all basically went to their in-laws and their friends and they all begged, borrowed and steal and, and came up with their fourth, which I think was $10,000 a piece to buy this. And this is back in the day before, you know, you're emailing back and forth with Ford, like, are you, do you give us your blessings or not? Well, anywho, they, 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 they do the acquisition locally, send the paperwork into Ford, and Ford's like, no way. No, they, these are four guys <laughs> scratched together money like, no, we're not going to happen. But, you know, as the lag of paperwork and, and mail would happen, whatever the area, it sold like pretty pretty good chunk of cars. I don't know the numbers or whatever, but they basically then said, well, we'll give them a, you know, we'll give them 120 days or something because I think they had moved some vehicles. And then 120 days came and they had moved enough vehicles to suffice. And over time, Ford got very comfortable with the idea of, of the Sap brothers. Um, and from that was that had to be, I think that was 1961. And then from there, they started buying other car dealerships and they got into truck dealerships. They all were, you know, kind of farm boys at heart, really loved the trucking industry. Two of the brothers always were in the truck leasing business. Um, they, they really, they like the big trucks more than they like the cars. And so they got into GMC truck dealerships. Long and the short is the, the first Sap Brothers truck stop was actually supposed to be a GMC truck dealership. They, again, went through all the paperwork, bought 50 plus acres kind of right outside where today our coffee pot stands, our first location stands with the idea that a good chunk of that was actually going to be a GMC truck dealership. And again, as 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 the lag of information and paperwork, and it, it came to find out that GMC had already kind of sold the trade area. They were, we were in Sarpy County, and and GMC was under the impression that it was going to be under Douglas County this whole time. <laughs> and for whatever reason, there was no budging on on one side or the other. And one of the brothers said, "Well, you know, Interstate 80 is relatively new. It's still going to get cut all the way across the state of Nebraska." You know, why don't we look into doing a, a, a truck stop? Uh, and so by the time that all rolled out, I think this was the late 60s when all this toil happened. 1971 is when the first Sap Brothers truck stop was opened in Omaha, Nebraska. So talk about the, how that started. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned the coffee pot and like you're going to laugh at me. Like I've seen that the, the coffee pot, you know, the tower, I mean, hundreds of times, you know, passed by for some reason. I thought it was an oil can. 
and, yeah. and that's yeah. me. I'm sure everybody else knows it's a coffee pot, but I, I thought it was, for some reason I always thought it was like an oil can or some yeah. kind of gas can. But talk about the symbolic meaning behind the coffee pot. Sure, I, I'll give you a quick story too on that. Uh, my grandfather was kind of the brother that was chosen to run what we would now call Sap Brothers, the business that I work for and whatever. All the, they were very industrious. All of them were. All of them were great businessmen, different strengths and talents that God had given them. Uh, but the, but the, but they from the very beginning kind of said, "Hey, Bill, you're going to run this this business." Uh, and as they were setting things up, and I don't know if if in, in his, well, I know I actually was. They must have already had figured out that it was was not going to be a GMC truck dealership. It was going to be a a truck stop. And he was actually driving in downtown Omaha. And at the time, that's where a massive stockyards was. They, they would rival Kansas City stockyards. I mean, they're big, big, big stockyards. And yeah. I think it was the Armor Meat Company had this massive water tower on top of their building. And at that time, the, 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 that building was for sale. My grandpa looked up and, and, and he says he heard this audible voice that said, you need that, you need that water tower. And so he called the, the pole, you know, he must have wrote down the numbers for sale sign, went back to his office, called the number. And, and uh, the guy's like, I, he's like, I'm interested in your building. I'm interested in your water tower. And the guy's like, well, I, I'm a real estate broker. I have no idea how you, how you get that down or what. Anyways, he found someone that could work on water towers and he got that water tower and they actually needed it. I mean, to this day, that is an active water tower, but he bought that water tower and brought it to where it currently is today, which is way West Omaha. And then he was thinking about it and he said, what, what is a way that I could signal to professional, you know, drivers that you're welcome here and you're welcome here 24 hours, seven days a week, 365. And, yeah. you know, I, th I think back then, and I still even think to this day, like a cup of coffee, a cup of warm coffee, like welcoming someone in. So he actually had this company weld in the, the handle and the, and the spout and even kind of the percolator up top. Uh, he welded all those things on. And we said, so I mean, now we have fancy LED lights on it all. And it's it's kind of morphed throughout the years. But I think he sh shined a light on that. And basically it was kind of like, hey, you're welcome. I mean, our slogan is welcome, be our guest. and and really, I think the coffee pot signifies like, hey, welcome, come here. Like, we'll, we'll serve you a cup of coffee and, and you're welcome here. So that's what that's how it all started. Yeah. Talk about, I, I love this aspect of, of really welcoming people and drivers. I mean, that's that's part of, of servanthood. And hey, guys, we know one of the hardest things in trucking is trying to figure out your cost and rates. And that's why we are excited to give you a rate calculator. Um, Scott Mirdink, one of our members, actually put this together. We have refined it a little bit, and we have it available for you, free of charge to use. Contact us at podcast at bulkloads.com, and we will give you that rate calculator free of charge. It's a simple link. You can open up, and you can put all your calculations in there. You can um, put the amount of trucks you have your insurance, every cost, and it breaks down your cost and rates, and it gives you pinpoint accuracy on what you need to charge out there in the industry. So again, send an email to podcast at bulkloads.com, and we will drop you a link to the rate calculator, totally free of charge. Thank you, and God bless. You know, I'm not going to names, but like, there's other just fuel stops you go to, and you don't get that feeling, though. How do you incorporate that into the culture like where it's from top all the way down to the frontline workers i mean it's interwoven in the in the culture because again you can tell that there's a clear difference in companies like yours that do that versus ones that sure. don't that don't have that approach or that that core element of of servanthood sure you know again i think i think it has to i think it probably has to start with the top i mean uh, again, I was blessed. You know, I worked for Sap Brothers for 15 years uh, in, in different capacities and different parts of our businesses. But like from day one of my employment, uh, I always understood that. And so I think that was always pretty well communicated. I think, you know, to, to be fair to some of our industry brethren on our truck stop side, too. I mean, you know, we have 17 travel centers. We're actually building our, our 18th right now. Um, but so, so, you know, we, I, I know every general manager of every travel center uh, by name, 
and we get to meet once a year face to face eyeball and we, we'll bring them all into one room and i mean we always go back to the basics why why do we exist we exist to bless and serve how are we going to do that and then again we get a lot more pragmatic about that but we you know we we, we kind of the next level in that is we say we've got to be the safest trucking truck stops and then actually our other side of our business which is delivering fuel we have you know trucks that deliver to farms and all sorts of places they're they're it's a dangerous business right so yeah first and foremost we got to be the safest at what we do um uh, this also applies to our to our truck stops into our wholesale fuel business we don't have the we don't make the iphone we don't have the secret kfc recipe we didn't we don't have the coca-cola recipe lock up in a vault anywhere we literally buy for A and sell for B. And so we better be pretty darn efficient at what we do. When we move goods and services and even people and expend energy, we better do it efficiently. And we better be adding value to our customer via via good price, but but five-star customer service. So we have to be the safest, we have to be the most efficient, and we have to have the best customer service. And that's kind of like the second piece of blessing and serving people. And then we even get a little bit more granular about like literally how do we functionally do that at SAP Brothers, um, and and, be, and because we have those conversations, I think I think that's why it happens, right? And I, and I'm sure people listening to this podcast might have gone in there and had a bad experience. I mean, we are human beings that that need forgiveness and and have bad days and do all those things. But hopefully, more times than not, that you'll see that as you come in, you're going to be welcomed as our guest. And we're going to do whatever we can do to make sure we're blessed and serving you as our customer. Yeah, I was going to mention this, and I, and I can see the uh, you have the sign up there, but uh, it, I always see it when I mean going Kansas City right at the Harrisonville one. But you yep. know, mama, mama approved bathrooms, and yep. um, I mean that's huge. I mean, from you know my wife who we have, we have three kids. I mean, um, has that an, was that an issue? Has that always been around, or is that something new that that? They got pioneered over the last 10 years. How did that? Get you're going to, you're going to, I've got a story for everything. So I apologize. You can, no, this is good. If, if it gets too long, you can just, just turn her off. But uh, yeah, no, that, I, you know, that was, that preceded me in terms of that slogan, that message, that thought process. Um, my grandfather, Bill, and there was a gentleman at the time that was the president of our travel centers. His name was Don Quinn. And they were like, what would signify, like this is a safe, awesome place to like bring anyone like that would like what, you know, everyone says cleanest restrooms. Every billboard has clean restrooms, cleanest restrooms. But really at the end of the day, like if you all think back to your childhood or whatever, it's like, it was good when, when mom said it was good. Right. And mom, at least when I was on a road trip, like mom was like, we're going to stop here. Cause I feel safe. I know this place, the kids can go to the bathroom. Um, so they, they really started this concept and, and so probably, I don't know, 10 or 10 years ago, uh, Don and Bill <laughs> wanted to do this, wanted to do this uh, billboard, which you, which you see today, it's the same billboard pretty much everywhere. It's this gal holding two thumbs up. And so they, they said, let's, let's really hit this. We're going to buy a lot of billboards in and around kind of our travel center network and we're going to do this. And so, you know, they bought the stock image of this, of this really pretty gal with two thumbs up and. And they went to the billboard company and said, here's what we want. And the billboard company said, well, that's great. Do you have the en endorsement rights for that image? And they said, well, we don't know what that is even, but we paid 15 bucks for this image. And they're like, you don't have the endorsement rights for that. That there's, you know, so they're like, well, we need these billboards up. And, and so my grandfather, actually that gal on that billboard that you see, and that's behind me right there, that's actually a, a picture of my wife. Oh wow! So I was actually—I like, yeah. was looking at the other family photo behind you, but I was like, yeah. "Is that the same yeah. person?" Yeah, I don't know <laughs> That's the kind of one you always see oh, to the camera there. But uh, yeah, so cool. That, so he's like, "Hey," he came into our office. He's like, "Hey, uh, what would Julie think about being on billboards for the mom for restrooms?" I was like, "Well, I'm not <laughs> sure if endorsing travel center restrooms was her dream as a child." I cannot. I can, I can always ask her, um, and she great. He said, "Well, we'll buy her a blouse." <laughs> so that, was, that sounds like a fair deal. Well, let me let me see if I can get my salesman shoes on, and and so we and that's ultimately what we did. We we bought her a black blouse and went to a photo shoot, and she took a bunch of photos with her with her thumbs up, and it's been a pretty successful 
uh, campaign and messaging to people like, hey, this is a this is a safe place. What, one of the things that Sap Brothers does, I think, is a little different than our industry brethren is we don't sell alcohol, don't sell pornography. We really we really do want a mom, a family, a professional driver to know like, hey, like we want we want this to be a really a safe, good place for you to stop. And so um, I think that kind of all that message, the mom approved message kind of ties in with the welcome be our guest message and just a safe, positive experience for the professional driver. Yeah, I think that's awesome. I, you know, my wife, I, I just remember over the years, always trying to find, you know, it was always like find a McDonald's. We always know those are clean, you know? So, yeah. I mean, yeah, especially mothers are looking for those restrooms. Yeah. Um, and I mean, everyone has a mom, right? And ever, so it's kind of like, I just, you know, I mean, I'm sure there's, there are folks that, that, don't have great relationships with their moms or fond memories, but, but I think most remember just kind of that comfort. And if mom would tell you, hey, this is a safe, good place to go, then then you would listen to her and it would and it would be. And so uh I think they uh they were they were geniuses in, in coming up with that and and thinking through that and really to this day we we've really used it and been successful with it. Yeah, that's awesome. Andy, I want to turn a little bit and talk more about you because you have a interesting story yourself. Like you actually, um, you know, moved away. You're not, uh, you didn't really grow up in Omaha, if I remember the story right. Your dad was at the Chicago Board of Trade, but kind of talk about that because I mean, it was years later where you kind of came back into the family business. Um, but kind of break that down for us. Sure. Yeah, that that's kind of a crazy story, you know. Um, yeah, my mom and dad were high school sweethearts, grew up in a little small town in Nebraska. Uh, and my dad had a dream of, uh, you know, being a trader at the Chicago Board of Trade, which he realized and, and had a career there. And so my little nuclear family, I'm scrunched in between two girls. I got an older and younger sister, grew up in a town called Naperville, Illinois, which is a which is a western suburb of Chicago. Uh, and that's where I met my my bride. Uh, as a as a 15 year old, we started dating, um, and then I went to the University of Nebraska. I was very 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 close with my with my grandfather Bill Sapp, and, and actually both grandfathers. They both lived in Ashland, Nebraska, uh, for their whole entire lives, uh, or adult lives, I should say. And um, so we would go back to Ashland, like if not, I mean, if not quarterly. I mean, like monthly. I mean, we were feel like I lived on Interstate 80, driving back and forth, just just seeing cousins and aunts and uncles and holidays. And my 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 parents were always trying to get us back to, to Nebraska, to be with our family and uh, went to the University of Nebraska. But ultimately, my wife went to the University of Indiana. We got married and we moved back to Chicago. Um, and it's a long story, but, be, but essentially in 2009, um, this made the decision to come back to Sap Brothers which previously I had never even fathomed doing. I didn't it. I didn't grow up in the business. Um, and so it was such a blessing. Uh, number one, just to be able to work with my grandfather, um, for him to really show me uh, the things that we're talking about, that we are here to bless and serve people and kind of that intersection of faith and business and, and how that can work and how you really can bless and serve people through the conduit of your work. Uh, so that was a blessing, um, just being close with him. And at the old time, I think learning what Sap Brothers does, you know, I love on the on our truck stop side, serving the professional driver. They're what makes our lives possible. Everything you see behind me, in front of me, I can touch, all got here by a truck, by hardworking men and women that that do it seven days a week and and do an awesome job. And so I, I love that that ability to bless and serve them if we do our job right. And then on our on our wholesale side of our business, it's really cool. We get to deliver fuel and propane and lubricants to all sorts of businesses, from many of my uncles who are our customers who are farmers in Nebraska, you know, all the way up to big municipalities and you name it, big trucking companies and um, big utilities and all those things. We get to do the same thing, and and a lot of those businesses, I mean, their biggest cost behind most times labor is the fuel that they burn. So they they want to talk to us, and and we're able to add significant value if we're doing our jobs right. Um, and so I I fell in love with the with the business. I think it came in December of two thousand nine, and 
and really have been blessed to work for Sap Brothers uh, for, for this amount of time and and love what we do. Um, your grandfather, Richard, you keep talking about was was he still around? Or is he still around today, or was he around when you took the role of CEO? Of my grandpa Richard or my grandpa Sap? Uh, sorry, your grandpa yeah. Richard. So my grandpa Richard. Okay. Uh, no, he had passed away when I was when I was. Uh, just out of college. My grandpa Sap was though. So Bill was okay. still actively working. Um, and towards the end, I think when I became CEO, I, I he was struggling with some dementia. Uh, but yeah, he was alive when 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 I when I was named the CEO. And I think even kind of before he had dementia, it was kind of he knew that was in the plans and that was we were all kind of working to that point. And for the first five or six years, um, you know, I was uh, the first two or three years here at Sap Brothers, um, I was on a route truck and uh, so I was driving a, driving a truck and filling lubricants for all of our all of our kind of customers in, in Southeast Nebraska, Southwest Iowa, North, Northwest Missouri, uh, any of those folks that needed bulk lubricants. So I'd call them and see what they needed. I, I mean, I was, a, I was what, I, what we call a route salesman. We don't have route salesmen anymore, but I mean, I was a guy that, you know, two days a week was in the office trying to drive sales in that part of the country. And then I would hop in a truck at three 30 in the morning and go on out to these businesses. And, and I would pump drums of oil or totes of oil into their, into their bulk tanks. And uh, it was, a, it was a blessing. It was, it was honestly some of the funnest years I've ever had just meeting folks out there that are uh, every day uh, just working hard and, and doing, doing awesome things. And, uh, I learned a ton and met a ton of just amazing, awesome people uh, that I'll never forget. And that's really kind of what started my love for Sap Brothers is is just understanding what we do and kind of where we are, where we're at. Transportation energy is such a fascinating thing, and it's such a blessing that I think is, is getting demonized in our society, but really so necessary and and such an awesome thing. And allows us to allows you to hop in a car at at eight p.m on a family trip and yeah. when your kiddos are, are waking up you can drive through mcdonald's and get them some some mm -hmm. breakfast sandwiches and by noon you're you could be skiing uh and i think we, we we take that for granted um and it really is it's really kind of a cool a cool business to be in i feel blessed to be in it yeah talk a little bit about you said early on that you guys are getting ready to um you're building your 18th service center um if you can kind of give us just a snapshot you know being at the helm of the company what does the the future look like i mean as far as growth opportunities with sap um you you mentioned before because i mean I, I consider you guys huge but i know that there are other fuel stops out there with many more chains branches and all that um which in if you can if you want to share but i mean you guys you, you guys sold a lot of gallons, you know, sure. oh, you know, in one year. But talk a little bit about that kind of where you are today, but even what that future looks like. I mean, you're sitting there where where future plans are to grow, you know, in the Midwest or in other areas. Sure. You know, the, the way that and again, we kind of always think about this. What, what really leads our decision is, is definitely the professional driver and commercial diesel fuel. We think that's got a very, very, very bright future. Again, high flow commercial diesel fuel is is how goods and services are moved, and and we yep. think it's going to be that way for a long, long time. Um, th th there'll be other alternative energies, but but really, we think um, diesel fuel will be there for a long, long time. I mean, even if there is an alternative energy that works, like it's still going to need some type of concept, like a like a travel center that's going to be able to to, to refuel uh, the, the the national fleet, I guess, if if you will. And so that kind of starts our process, uh, you know, I guess, you know, uh, a lot of times what you'll do when you go to fleets lot with larger fleets is you kind of say, hey, what lanes do you run? And they're going to tell you what east, west lanes and north, south lanes are to say, hey, I run Interstate 80 or I run Interstate 70 or I run 40 or I run 10. And then I kind of box up and I'll go up I-29 or I'll go up I-49 or, you know, <clears throat> and so. You kind of want to make a network where where you're kind of in the same lanes where you can kind of build something where it's add value to kind of your core customer base um and so that's what my grandfather did you know it's for, the first one was in omaha second one was in council bluffs which is not far at all i mean i'm talking 
35 yeah. miles, not maybe not the river. 35 miles. Yeah. So typically you, you would want to space them out. I don't know if that that time his growth, you know, algorithm was like, okay, let's space these out a little bit further. But but now we would, we wouldn't necessarily, I think, stick two travel centers that close. Um, but I mean, that's kind of the thing is you want to kind of think about the lanes that you're currently in, where you're at in value to your customers. You want to go out and talk to your customers and say, hey, like what markets would 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 make a lot of sense for you guys? Where are you guys at as an extension of where we're currently at? And and so you have those conversations. Um, but then I guess to even step above that, when we think about growth on our travel center side, um, what we don't want to do, and we've seen a lot of our industry brother do this, is they say like, oh, we, I, we call them artificial North Stars. So we'll say, we want to grow by two stores a year. And we think that's a that's a really bad trap um, for people to get into because your your North Star now becomes two stores a year. And what if one of those is is an okay deal, but it's not. But but again, you think about like culture and initiative and yeah. like top to bottom, like everyone's like, yeah, but we need, we said two a year or two years. So we've never really had that artificial North Star, nor, nor God willing, when, when I'm here, do we, do we want to have that? We want to, we always want to think about things pragmatically. We're, we're a pretty humble, privately held company. So we got to make sure we have the right balance sheet in order to grow. Um and then it's got to be the right opportunity. We got to find the right market and find the right piece of real estate. And so, you know, we don't have a real estate department. The real estate department is me and a couple other guys in our company. And we <laughs> kind of prayerfully, you know, thoughtfully kind of think through what would what would what would be next for us. And and the last one we built was in 2015, south of Kansas City in Harrisonville. And and this next one will be uh, just north of of St. George, Utah, on Interstate 15. It's actually in a town called Tokerville, exit 27 yeah. on I-15, but a, but kind of the St. George, Utah market, if you can think of that. Which is growing rapidly. I was just out there this summer. Is, yeah. I mean, St. Yeah. George, Utah is growing leaps and bounds. Really, really, really. I, just FYI for anyone that that this is just, uh, this is aside from Sapper, this travel center, they'll stop by if you go there. Uh, it is, that that's like one of the most beautiful places that I've been to in our, in our country. Yep. We have Zion National Park and Bryce Canyon. That's where we went. Yep. For a good Midwest boy that that gets to see a lot of open skies, which by the way, I think is absolutely beautiful. And I, I feel blessed to live here. It is, it takes your breath away, uh, how cool the designer God is, because it's it's a pretty special place in the country. You should you should definitely put it on your bucket list if you if you don't have it on there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um I'm gonna kind of land the plane here and talk about uh you know you talking about kind of future growth and the future of the business um and do you see you know i look up in your family photo and i can see a couple i think a couple boys in there yeah. i mean or oh, and girls yeah. i mean do you see the next ceo um you know down the road is that a vision that you have or thoughts that you have uh, you know keeping it in the family business you know i don't so What's another cool thing that that happens at Sap Brothers, which is different than a lot of you know kind of closely held family businesses, is you know all of our travel center managers, all of our wholesale fuel managers, as well as what we call them, our support, you know, very very key critical employees that are helping support the, the entire business. All if they're at that level and they, and they and they can be voted on to then have an opportunity to buy shares in Sap Brothers and be shareholders while they're employees here. Uh, and it's the same share that like my grandma, who's seal Sap, who's still alive, they own the same share with the same redemption agreement as as they while they're while they're employees. And um so there's quite a few uh, uh shareholders of Sap Brothers that aren't necessarily like Sap family. Um I would I would love it to work alongside my sons or daughters if that's if that's what they want to do. But I definitely don't want them to think that that's what yeah. they have to do or ought to do. Uh, I, my my you know my prayer would be that it happens pretty organically, like it happened with me. It's interesting, you know, my grandfather again, who was his brothers still have equity in Sap Brothers, but really it was kind of his his family that 
ran the business. Like there really wasn't a second generation. There was a couple family members that did that did some important jobs at Sap Brothers, but there really wasn't a second generation per se. Hmm. For a few ex- uh, uh, exceptions to that, but yeah. Um, so literally, when I when I came in in 2009, I mean, I was really one of the only family members that that worked for Sap Brothers, uh, which is kind of unique. You know, a lot of the other uh, businesses that I get to talk to that are like Sap Brothers, I mean, it's three, four generations. And I mean, they grew up scrubbing the pumps and, you know, going on deliveries with their dad and, and all of that stuff. And and that really wasn't my case. I really truly kind of came from the outside in, in 2009. That's awesome. Yes. Well, Andy, the last thing I'm going to ask, and, and this is just uh, for you to speak to our audience, you know, we represent now almost 8,000 um, freight companies um, across the U.S., uh, a lot of them here in the Midwest, you know, from Nebraska, Missouri, Kansas. So many of our uh, members and listeners of the podcast, I, I assume know of Sat Brothers or use Sat Brothers. Um, any last words that you'd like to to tell them before we close out? I just say thank you for your years and years and years of support. And, you know, we, we are built, you know, that it's kind of a goofy uh, saying, right? I think maybe people who don't understand trucking or agriculture or the worlds that we kind of live in, you know, just put boutique and, tr- and travel center or truck stop in the same sentence, they may laugh at you. Uh, but really, I, I think it's a very, uh, very effective way to th- think about it is that we're here to serve the guy who runs as an owner operator and runs his own truck the guy that serves you know the guy that has 25 and is doing that i mean that's really we we, we absolutely service fleets that are eight times that big right but but how we're founded are, when you think about the core customer of sap brothers this you guys are who we serve you guys are the ones that are that are paying our bills and we need to do everything we can to bless and serve you guys every day. So if you don't, if you don't feel like that's happening. I mean, we have a website forum where I would love to hear what are the ways we can bless and serve you? What are the ways that, what are the things, services, amenities, anything that you could think of that would make your life easier and better on the road? You know, I definitely want to hear about them and that that's who we need to keep, thinking about and making sure we're, we're uh, keeping you guys in our focus. And hopefully you guys feel that when you, when you stop at our places. And again, I can't tell you how much I appreciate uh, you guys and your business and, and your trust and, and your stop. And, you know, uh, everything's important, right? A, a, a car, you know, I think the average fill up on a car these days is, is 10 gallons. And uh, the average fill up on, a, on, a, on an over the road truck fill is, you know, over 100 gallons, right? And with hours of service and other things, you know, um, you guys, you guys are awesome. You guys come to our facilities, you spend your hard earned money and you have a lot of choices and where you can go uh, and you give us a, a lot of business. And so hopefully we're set up to, to serve you guys well when you're, when you're stopping with us. Yeah, that's well said. I think uh, it, it hit my heart too, to think that, yeah, we have one, two truck operators and, 50 plus companies, but man, we, we serve them all and they're all equally important, um, to us. And especially the, the, the small owner ops that, uh, uh, that make up a huge part of our trucking industry, especially the ag haulers, um, the ones in agriculture, grain, feed, fertilizer, the same customers, um, that you're dealing with. So sure. Andy, I thoroughly enjoy this, man. I am so glad that, uh, that we got to connect and uh, I remember Andy Holtz, it was a couple years ago, I was up in Omaha and he had said that he he was friends with you. I was like, man, I would love to, <laughs> I'd love to meet him sometime. Um, so man, I'm so, uh, so honored and blessed to do that. We have an office up there, Smart Freight. So man, next time uh, I'm up that way, I think I told you, I'm going to, I'm going to try to hit you up and maybe the three of us. I love it. There. You better not come up not, 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 not right, right now. <laughs> do something like that or coffee or something. So we would love to, I'd love to connect above and beyond on this. And it was a blessing to be, uh, on this podcast, this is because I, I was telling Jared this is my first one. So <laughs> hopefully, I didn't I didn't put everyone to sleep. Especially hopefully if you weren't driving. But <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. Uh, Andy, yeah. thanks again for coming on. Appreciate it. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Tyler. I'm going to let you kick this off first. What do you think? 
uh, amazing episode. I got to say, I didn't know, I guess, how deeply embedded they were in agriculture. I didn't know. I mean, the whole story is just phenomenal of, you know, how they got into business and why they're in the business, um, to bless and serve others. Um, and their whole philosophy behind that with their, um, you know, God given abilities. But yeah, I, I guess I'd never realized that, you know, going back generations, like it all started with, you know, um, farmers and they were, uh, sharecroppers and, um, they just continue to be, um, really just the overall stop for farmers and truckers, um, with agriculture. Yeah. And obviously their faith has got them to where yep. they are today. Um, trusting in the Lord. And I think that's what, what's made them successful. I mean, yep. just their servanthood mindset, uh, on customers. So, yeah. And I mean, just the power I mean, how many, I mean, Andy was saying like they go through like a hundred million gallons of diesel fuel, yeah. or I mean, through their network. So, I mean, they are, um, man, moving a lot of fuel through their, through their yeah. systems. Yeah. And it, it definitely goes a lot, a long way whenever, um, you know, first and foremost, they put the Lord, Lord first, but you know, I think it's crazy. They don't sell any alcohol in their yep. stops, um, or any, uh, he was saying they don't do any like pornography or nudity or anything like that, which is amazing. It truly is just a family stop, um, a family rest stop. Yeah. Um, well, cool. Well, Andy, man, thank you so much for, uh, graciously coming on the podcast. He's going to be at our conference Yes, coming up here in a couple months. So Andy, um, he, he, he said he will speak. I know I told you to put him on, but yeah, I think we're gonna get him up there and yeah. just say a few words. It won't be long, but really, or really get him to just talk a little bit about their story. Yeah. I'm super excited guys. The conference it's coming up. Um, we're getting more and more tickets sold each day. So you want to make sure and go and grab yours. Um, go to bulkfreightconference.com and you can purchase your tickets there. You can see the schedule, the agenda, what's going on, um, and everything like that. We know that, uh, it's going to be out here before we know it. We know people are busy. They can't, sometimes you don't think you can get away. We want you to come. Yep. We said it last time. And again, we are going to have it set up, um, where you can drop in, um, you can go take care of work. So man, do not um, miss out this year. I guarantee you're going to, um, have regrets if you do, yeah. um, and the business that you're going to gain, your business may be flying right now, but I guarantee the, the relationships that you're going to make at this, the network effect, it's going to be so well worth it. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, besides that, we do have mats coming up. Um, people oh, yeah. are kind of asking, are we going to be there at mats this year? We are. The answer is yes. We will have the same exact booth as the previous years. Some people are reaching out for VIP tickets. We do have those available. Reach out to us, podcast at bulkloads.com, and we will send you free VIP uh, tickets to Matt's to come see us. We want to see you there, interact with you. I think this year we might have a truck in our booth. Yeah. Um, one of our members is uh, allowing us to put his show rig in there, so we're super excited for that, and we'd love to see you there. Yeah. Well, a couple other things before we... Uh, Jet out of here. Hopefully you follow us on social media, but Joe, who does these podcasts, yep. um, he put together a Super Bowl commercial. So if you haven't yet, check out our Super Bowl commercial. Yep. We know the Super Bowl's done by now, and uh, most people will be watching this after the Super Bowl, but yeah, check out our Super Bowl commercial. I think uh, you will, you'll be impressed. It's yeah. really cool. So, gave me goosebumps. Yeah. Um, also, a lot of people who watch on our YouTube channel actually aren't subscribed. If you can... Click on the subscribe button right above my finger and make sure and subscribe. That way you don't ever miss an episode. Actually, you'll be notified when a new episode comes out. Um, also, please, man, we uh, would love for you to share this with others yep. that can benefit as well. Um, we put these podcasts out really to help our community and enrich the knowledge of ours. And we believe knowledge is power. And the more people and the more power and knowledge you have, the better decisions you can make. Yep, exactly. So awesome. Um, and as always, before we close out of here, just like when we talked about this podcast today with Andy and the faith, man, faith is strong um, with us at Bulk Loads and our community. We want to be praying for you and your family out there. Um, Tyler, man, I'm going to put you on the spot, yeah. man. Can you close us out in yeah, prayer? 100%. Yeah, 100%. Lord, we come to you um, today just to thank you and praise you, Lord. We just thank you for all your many blessings that you've given to all of us, Lord. And we just ask that you just forgive us of all of our sins and any wrongdoing. Um, we know that we are not perfect and we can never be perfect in your eyes, Lord. I just ask that you just uh, you just bless all of our members out there and all of our community. We know that a lot of people are going through a lot of hardships. Um, people are struggling right now with family. Um, people are struggling with their business, uh, with the economy and the market right now. Um, I know some guys are uh 
struggling with some finances, Lord. So we just lift those guys up to you and just ask you um, to bless them and give them guidance and just security, Lord. We know that you are a big God and you can do big things, Lord. Um, we just thank you and praise you, Lord, and we love you. Amen. Amen. If you do have a prayer, please send them to prayer at bulkloads.com. Um, we have a team on here. We would love to pray for you. Um, man, these uh, we're getting more and more prayer requests and uh, and just different uh, diseases and, and things that, uh, man, we just, we know that it's, man, it impacts everybody. Yep. Everybody needs prayer. Um, so, man, don't be shy. Reach out to us uh, with a prayer request. So thank you, as always, for listening to the Bulk Loads podcast. And as always, God bless.